There is no single feminism. Women have always struggled throughout history and across the world for freedom and against patriarchal domination. So I'm going to tell you about some of my favorite texts from just one feminist movement, the women's liberation movement that began in the United States starting in the late 1960s and lasted through the 1970s and 1980s. It was an incredibly vibrant and powerful movement, which produced not only important lasting changes for American women, but also some breathtakingly powerful pieces of writing. So first up is the Dialectic of Sex by Shulamith Firestone. It was published in 1970 when Firestone was just 25 years old. It's a wildly ambitious book that tries to do for the analysis of patriarchy what Marx and Engels did for the analysis of class domination. Uh, in the book, Firestone argues that the origins of, women oppres of women's oppression lie in the biological division of reproductive labor which in her view ensures the psychic and material domination of women by men. Uh, the book includes a number of radical utopian proposals. It's a provocative, rich and challenging book with which you are certainly not required to agree, but which deeply bears reading and thinking about. My next book is Adrian Rich's Of Woman Born, published in 1976. Uh, like Shulamith Firestone's Dialectic of Sex, Of Woman Born, focuses on the theme of biological reproduction as a source of women's oppression, but otherwise couldn't be more different from Firestone's book. Adrienne Rich argues that we should distinguish between motherhood as a cultural institution that entraps women in their own bodies and in the domestic sphere, and the potential of motherhood to be something that sets women, men and children truly free. The book is an extraordinary and lyrical meditation on mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, bodies, medicine, psychology, history, politics, and Adrian Rich's own experience of being a mother to three boys. It's always a book that my students of all genders really love to read and discuss, and they very often end up giving the book as a gift to their own mothers. My third book is Angela Davis's Women, Race and Class, which was published in 1981. Uh, Angela Davis is one of the most significant political visionaries of our time. She's a longtime member of the Communist Party. She was a member of the Black Panthers who stood trial for arming black activists. She has a PhD in philosophy and is a professor at the University of California, Santa Cruz. And she continues to this day to be a tireless activist who campaigns among other things for the abolition of prisons and the end of sexual violence. Um, so Women, Race and Class is perhaps the most important of all of Angela Davis's books. As the title suggests, it offers an analysis of how three structures of oppression, patriarchy, racial domination and class domination, interact to mutually sustain each other and to devastate the lives of the worst off women and men. In other words, Women, Race and Class is a foundational text of what we now call intersectional feminism. Overall, Women, Race and Class is a great feminist text and a reminder that the history of feminism is full of productive disagreement. My fourth book is The Scum Manifesto by Valerie Solanas, self-published in 1967 and sold on the street by its author. One year later, Valerie Solanas made headlines uh, for shooting the artist Andy Warhol and she was jailed for three years. So the Scum Manifesto is, is very difficult to describe. It's a wild and provocative and bizarre feminist manifesto. It's in, turn, in turns disturbing and exhilarating and deeply funny. It argues that men are in fact the weak, submissive, boring and passive ones, and that it is women who are secretly creative, brilliant, strong, cool and inventive, the sources of everything that's interesting in culture. Solanus also argues that truly independent women uh, don't need sex and that it's educated middle class women who are co-conspirators in patriarchy. And finally, she also argues that the male sex should be abolished. Needless to say, it's a problematic text in all sorts of ways, but also a potent reminder of the place of the outrageous and the carnivalesque within feminism. And it's really well worth a read. My final book is an anthology called 
Sisterhood is Global. It's edited by the American feminist Robin Morgan and published in 1984. So the US women's liberation movement, like the British women's liberation movement, took place in a global context. And so this edited volume offers a sort of encyclopedic overview of the condition of women and their ongoing political struggles for equality in 70 countries from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. While the essays reveal an incredible diversity of background conditions against against which feminist struggles occur, conditions of history, religion, culture, economics, and so on, certain themes echo throughout the book, most notably that women's emancipation must go hand in hand with an end to colonial and racial domination, capitalist exploitation, and environmental degradation. It's an amazing thing to leaf through or to study systematically, and also a really important reminder that feminism is not something owned by any one group of women. 